Hello. Oh my goodness. I'm on the stream. Hello, people. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you here. Thanks, Destiny. I'm loving your energy. I'm loving your hair. Uh, you know why? Thank like, you. Delta is like purple, you know, like, and there's like a like, purple kind of aesthetic overall to to the game and like and just the promotion for it. So you're, you're, we're in the vibe right that's now. That's why I did it. That's why, that's I, did why it. I did it. That's good. Yeah. Why I, did it. I just. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here. Um, we kind of want to jump right into it because I want to know more about you. I'm sure our guests want to know more about you, how you got yeah, started, like what what got you inspired. Tell us all about it. Oh man, um, I got I got I got started in games. I've been making games for about five years now. Um, for full disclosure, I'm like an old man. I'm like 35. I got two kids, and I've got enough. Stop your games. mouth. I'm no. Playing. I'm not saying it because like I don't post for like oh he's making games for five years what is he like 24 like nah homie. <laughs> I pay a lot in taxes every year <laughs> with adult man um, but uh, but yeah I got my start because um, at work one day like a friend of mine had just mentioned that like I saw him kind of designing what looked like a game and I was like how are you doing that um, and he was like oh is this thing called game engines um, that you can just use and I was like what. <laughs> You mean you don't have to work at Square or like Ubisoft or EA to make video games? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of learned from that about like Unreal Engine and Unity. And um, and I've always kind of desired to see like a really good like Sonic the Hedgehog game in like 3D. Like I felt like after the couple of Sonic Adventure games, um, the, the 3D transition wasn't all that smooth, you know what I'm saying, for like a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, with Unreal, you know, like it's it's got like a lot of tools that can take someone like me who doesn't necessarily know how to program like in C++ or you know, any languages and can design using the Blueprint system. Um, and I kind of got my start doing that, just like making fan games for different like IP that I loved as a kid and kind of wished made that jump the 3D really well. So I made like a Sonic, um, a Sonic uh, fan game called Sonic Explorers, which plays actually pretty yeah. similar. So like Sonic Frontiers, based on like the reveal trailers, but that game, that's a fan game I made like three or four years ago. And then from there it became, I made like a Mega Man X fan game, uh, which ultimately became Proto Droid Delta, which I'm working on now. Um, a Mega Man Legends fan game, and then last, like an Ape Escape um, game called, called Tough Stuff. It's very silly. The idea oh, that's is that, cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have these stuffed animals who become magically imbued and they become alive and they become aggressive. And so they're like tough, oh. stuffed animals. <laughs> it's, it's I like that, stuff. though. <laughs> that's super cute. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I did. Um, and so, yeah, and so that, that's kind of what got my start. That's how I got my start in making games, um, fan games, um, Unreal Engine blueprints, um, and just hoping, you know, just this desire or thought that I could make something that um, I hadn't yet seen made, and I was hoping that developers could make at some point, you yeah. know. No, I think that's incredible. And like the fact that you saw someone doing it and you were like, I'm just going to jump on here and make games myself. Like I've oh. always found that overwhelming, but like props to you because you, you've I'm, made like several games and they I all, I love all of the, the inspiration. You're, no. I well, that. I mean, like I we all got to be I mean, a little bit, a little yeah, bit. Right <laughs> like, normal people don't do this. Like normal people don't be like, oh, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> Time to keep making this project. It's like normal people are on Netflix at 2 a.m. Normal people are sleeping at 2 a.m. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, you got to be a little bit of a nut. Um, but it's a good nut. You know, it's like a macadamia Yo, nut. I have to ju uh, macadamia nut. I had, to, yeah. I had to jump in real quick. I was about to introduce um, to you. I'm sorry, Justin. Yeah, no, it. it's all good. Adam came in, came in hot. Thank you guys for being so patient. It is amazing to have you. I know you have you have a, a, an announcement to make, and oh. I think you should make that announcement on air. Oh, man, yeah. you're a good guy, Justin. So um, the long story short is I recently signed a publishing deal with Humble Games. Protégé Delta will be published by Humble Games. Uh, I had to keep quiet about that for a few days. It was really hard. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> avoiding Discord, avoiding like socials, so I didn't like slip up and pull a Tom Holland and like kind of spill the beans. Um, but yeah, yeah <laughs> Tom I'm, working Holland. <laughs> I'm working on the game for like two, oh, two and a half years now. Um, and just, you know, started with a Kickstarter and then and then after um, Humble took really like really took the strong initiative to start the BGDF, the Black Game Developer Fund, being one of the first recipients of that was like you know just talking about to the moon. I was just like thrilled just with that. 
Um, but they continue to believe in the project. They continue to support me. And I can't understate like the support just like Justin's been giving me all along the way. Like it's it's a lot of things happen. It's like, you know, you, you know that phrase is like if I see far, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. Well, I definitely am standing on like Justin's giant shoulders, you know what I'm saying? Himself, <laughs> Tony Barnes, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, uh, like Sean Alexander, like all the guys like on this like Discord we've got. Um, and it's been just a prop, like propping me up and, and supporting. And so it's like, it's just been like a lot of sort of like very fortuitous things, you know, meeting John Paulson, you know, he used to be with the organization. Now he supported and believed in it. And yeah, it was cool to see like what started as a fan project that I just really wanted to scratch a creative itch as his gang gained a following, gained some professional support. And now Humble Gangs is publishing it. Like, I, I don't know. It's like, it's kind of like a fairy tale. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's very, I'm very happy this morning. I'm like very happy. <laughs> You're you're um, always yeah. happy, man. Yeah, you're always I happy. I'm always happy, but like I'm like more happy today. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but like now I'm As here. As you should be. <laughs> Welcome yeah. back, Derek. Welcome. Yeah, I'm back from the ether. I'm back from the ether to to, <laughs> to say, uh, you know, let's let's get this let's kick this game up. You know, um, I, I would be really interested to demonstrate some of Protodroid Delta. Uh, on the on the stream, if we're ready to to jump into some of that. Oh yeah, I'd love to see that. Awesome. Um, before we go though, I want to talk a little bit about like the the Black Game Developer Fund, um, if we can, because I think it, it it was very instrumental. You were instrumental in the Black Game Developer Fund, and I know that Desi was about to introduce me as you know one of the advisors on it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's I mean that's been a crazy it's been a crazy journey like just working with humble to to start like the pipeline for that you know they have been very helpful and resourceful you know in the community in the culture like supporting develop black developers in general and then black developers with this fund and then really allowing folks to uh contribute to how everything would come together and and um adam was one of the first people that I reached out to or, you know, uh, for participation in this fund. And he's been amazing to work with and has been collaborative, communicative and oh, congrats oh, on, you know, getting your game published because you worked Appreciate really, really hard at it. And you've been a you've been a like a pillar of light in the community. Oh, oh man, this is such that a was really sweet. What a warm show. <laughs> man, I appreciate you, Justin. <laughs> Yeah, man, I appreciate you, man. Oh, this is cool, man. Oh, man. You know, uh, you know what? Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Destiny, I feel like we're friends. Derek, you were in the ether, so we haven't quite connected. But soon you and I will have a bond, time, like yes. the bond of me and Justin. And it will be, yeah, it's like, like two hands. <laughs> the me and, and my giant <laughs> shoulders. Don't anyway, giant that being shoulders. said, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that being said, I'm going to back out. I want you guys to really, like, jump in, talk about the game and, and play. I'll see you guys in a bit. See ya. Bye. Thanks for stopping by, Justin. And thanks for bringing up Humble Bundle and like all of those amazing things. And that's incredible. Like, kudos to you. Like, Adam, that's amazing. So I know it's probably like a dream come true. But one of the questions I want to ask, and one of the things that piqued my interest the most, was the yeah. fact that you have a female protagonist. Oh, yeah, that was really important for me. Um, yeah, for tell us about reasons. that. Um, so, like, I, one of the big motivations for Protodroid Delta is, was, like, creating a game with characters of people who don't normally see themselves in gaming, right? And so it's like, I was, like, as I was designing the characters and stuff and, and, and trying to figure things out, um, like, I realized, like, you know, it's, if you look at, like, like certain, certain games that have rosters, like, over, like, 70 characters, something like that, and only like three or four are like people of color, for example, right? And it's like, that's kind of weird. Right. Like, there's usually more animal mascots than there are like people who have brown or black skin, right? And it's like, that's kind of silly. And then if you look at like, and I decided we're making like a Mega Man inspired game. If you look at the vast history of like Mega Man games, it's like over 35 or 32 titles. Um, and throughout like on like, hundreds of characters. And I think there's like three female characters, you know, it's like a very small subset. And it's like, this kind of sucks, you know, that like you have the, yeah, like, so many characters, so many opportunities to show different types of perspectives, different like personalities, and it's just like you just dropping the ball, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, so for me, it was really important to create characters for folks who don't normally see themselves in gaming and to put them front and, and, and center. You know, like one of the key aspects of the game is that the, the, the cast skews predominantly females, like six to five or six to four, if I remember correctly. Um, where like, and like a lot of the key protagonists are, are female. So it's like Delta is a female robot and then her creator is, is, is female, her best friend, Android. And I wanted to create a story where the essential tension is usually um, not amongst a bunch of cliches, right? Where it's like, oftentimes, if you have female characters, the central story theme is around some male or like some love interest or some sort of right. like, their, their value mm -hmm. kind of attached to how desirable they are to, to a guy. And I was like, no, it'd be cool if like, it's just a couple of women who are beefing with each other, you know what I'm saying? Or people who have different perspectives on how to solve <laughs> the problem um, and how they sort of like resolve that, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it was really important for me to, to create, again, this is that, that line, like create a game with characters for people who don't often see themselves in gaming. Um, and uh, and like, and, and that goes like a lot of ways. Like, like for example, Dr. Shelton, she wears a headscarf because like, you know, I'm Muslim. I grew up around like Muslim women my entire life. And like, um, and that's kind of how they look, you know, that's like my mom right there. That's my aunt. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, I grew up around like Latino folks and, you know, they're not often seen, we're not often seen as in like the lead roles in games. You look at like the Final Fantasies or often games coming from like overseas and stuff. And the most will be is like a side character or like maybe two side characters, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, and that's like been changing Barrett recently. From Final Fantasy yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like Barrett. It's like Barrett it represents yeah. all the people. <laughs> all, all the black people, people. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, that's, why, that's why he's so buff. That's why he's so big. He's holding he's holding all the That's true. Yeah. That's exactly. true. Exactly. Like all of them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to get away from that, you know, and, and create an opportunity for, for um for folks. So the cast has got like four or five black characters, got three Latino characters. Um, it's got an Asian female character, a white a male character, um, and um, yeah, and just like a good mix of stuff, you know. Um, and so, yeah, that that was really important to me. Oh, Derek, so you I'm got glad a whole you did dash that. and then jump. Yep. There we go. Oh, he got it. Don't judge me. Oh, and oh, it's okay. It. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get oh, it on, yeah. on the next. I'm one. so glad yeah. that you brought that up um, because I'm sorry, I. I was listening to you play the game, and then I was like, don't backseat game Destiny, just let him do it. He can do it. But um, <laughs> what I was going to say is I'm so glad that you brought that up and that you are so inclusive with diversity. So really quick question, slightly personal, yeah. but I know you said you have kids. Do you have girls? I have a daughter, and it's uh, really cool. Here's what happens. I have, a, I have a daughter and a son, and I've been doing some like some like character designs working with like my artist, Blaze Malefica, on, on, on Twitter. She's been doing like, the comic work. And my character illustrated Def Jews, um, at Def Jews on, on Twitter and art station. Um, and we did some like different designs for Delta and different hairstyles. Um, and then my daughter walks up to, 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 the, to the monitor and she's like, Dada, me. And she's like, me, like that's, that's me. And like, and that's how I'm trying to achieve with this. For people who don't see themselves, you know, front and center is like the main driver to see that and be like, that's me. Um, and I almost tear it up because it's like this is this is this is it. Like if, if the game doesn't if the game just dies tomorrow, I'd like of course, this is it. You know what I'm saying? I've achieved you know, really something amazing that my daughter I saw herself in a video game character. Like you know what I'm saying? Um, that I'm committing so much of my time to that millions of people hopefully will see at some point. And she just saw it and said, "That's me." Um, so yeah, yeah, I got a daughter. <laughs> no, that's incredible. I love yeah, that it, because that. growing up, I I um. I realized that my favorite characters were like characters that look kind of like me, but weren't really like me because right. we just didn't right. have that. We didn't have that um, at all. So I was like, oh, right. my favorite character is Jasmine. And then like the next Darkest Princess that came out was Pocahontas. So that was my favorite right. character. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Until we got to Tiana. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, um, another question I wanted to ask, and then I'm going to throw it to Derek, is I love, you kind of talked about it and I'm I'm assuming that some of the um, cultures that inspired the look of the area comes from the people that you've grown up around and, and, and being Muslim because you can definitely tell there's like a, a very special aesthetic to yeah. the environment. Oh yeah. Can yeah, you talk yeah. a little bit right. about that? Excellent. Yeah so like I stumbled upon this thing called solar punk and that and I just ran with that. So like as I'm designing the game I'm thinking to myself it's got to be unique, right? It can't just be generic sci-fi kind of future setting. Um, and so I'm going on Pinterest and I suddenly see like what looks literally um, a concept art that literally designed this stage. Um, it's a piece by Stephen Wong, an art station, um, and it's called like the Great Solar Bridge, right? 
uh, or Solar Punk Bridge, he called it. And then I found about like this com art competition that um, Adam Hawk did called Solar Punk Art Challenge, where it's like literally the opposite of like cyberpunk stuff. It's like a future in which like technology and, and people have grown together in harmony, and like you see like this wonderful blend of like like nature, nat natural elements, and tech, um, all bolstered by like renewable energy and like a, like a hopeful, more pleasant kind of future. So that, that just resonated with me, and I was like, there's so many games where it's like the setting is always like it's a dystopia. The world sucks. Yeah. Everyone is in debt. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. <laughs> all of your enemies dead except you and your cousin. You know, it's like uh, man, that's sad. Like, is that the only vision of the future that we have? Like, there's no other like interpretation of the future might be. Um, and so that kind of drove things. On top of that, like, I've always kind of like thought it was cool when characters were just like it, it is like like who can use like long flowing clo clothing as like a tapestry, like like a way of expression mm -hmm. themselves. And I find very often in games, um, particularly unfortunately, like female characters, they go the opposite direction. It's like you'll have a guy who's got like yeah. armor, like he's even his eyebrows are armored, and then you got a female character yep. who's like literally her her chest is out and stuff, and it's like out, that's just silly. out for everybody to see. It's like fanfare. Are you gonna, you're gonna fight a war like that? Like you go, you go on a battle like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have your priorities in order, unless maybe she's like thinking next level. Like if I can get these dudes to think I'm so hot that they stumble in their tracks and they get distracted. It's like, it's like <laughs> what? What does that make sense? So anyways, I don't think that battle um, tactic works in the field. I don't think it's that works. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so I wanted to design characters with that in mind. That like, you know, how can you design characters who like, wear like their, their, their clothing their, is like a form of their expression, like a part of who they are. And, and really pays a nod to sort of like old world kind of like, like traditions and, 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 um, and cultures and stuff. And so, yeah, a lot of characters, that was a big point, like they all wear like long, flowing, colorful, vibrant, um, like like color clothing, which pays homage to different traditions and different cultures. Um, yeah, and it was just really, that was really important to me too, like to make it look great, you know what I'm saying, um, in, in that respect. It does, it looks amazing. And honestly, like it still looks feminine. Do you know what I mean? Like she's still yeah. like even she's not showing a lot, but she still looks very feminine and beautiful. And and I just love what you did with it. I'm I'm gonna Ooh. like throw up the fact that you threw in purple. <laughs> no, I'm oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> you know what's funny? so here, okay, here's how I settle on purple. Okay, here's how I settle on purple. And maybe you'll think less of me than this by this, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted to make a Mega Man X fan game. Okay. Yes. And I wanted uh -huh. her to have the the abilities of both X and Zero. X is blue. Red is zero. Blue, red, blue plus red makes purple. So she's got color a theory. No, no. She's got a. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> she's That's got fine. Cannon, I'm all about um, color theory. Yes. After X, and she's got a blade after zero, Bloody. so she embodies both of their abilities, and so that's why she's um, that's how that's why she is the way she is. She's purple. I can't and believe I that I would think really less well of you. Like everything else. <laughs> purple works really. That was a, that's it's, an incredible it's, reason. It's, that's that's <laughs> that's what's up. But all right, Derek, I'm going to throw it to you. I'm sure you have some questions. You know, I, I'm in here in the game. I, I'm like experiencing the gameplay firsthand. And so, yeah, the first thing is, I, I have to ask is, is the gameplay. You know, what, what sort of, uh, we, we've talked about Mega Man. We've talked about, um, you know, all these other aesthetics that brought into uh, building the project. What other, right. what other parts, you know, uh, what's, what else is that influence here that we might not know about? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, w when I launched a Kickstarter, people ask about it, literally the game is just Mega Man X in 3D. Like, that is the DNA. Like, I love that 2D okay. side-scrolling, how fast and how smooth the gameplay was, um, and how, like, the gameplay is so focused, right? It's so simple. It's like, you just, like, I think Sequelitis did a really funny video. It's like, they should call Mega Man just jump and shoot, man. That's all you do. You jump and you shoot. You jump and shoot. <laughs> you do. <So> I, <laughs> that's all you do. And so, like, that was one of the primary challenges. It's like, how do you take something in 2D space, which is very easy, jump and shoot, because you only move in two, like, two directions. But how do you do yes. that in 3D, where you don't turn the game into, like, Fortnite or into, into like, a third-person shooter? Where now the the core mechanic and the that the, the game for the player is expected to make is manipulating like how well can you aim on top of movement, and that immediately becomes way less accessible. Like I know me personally, I'm not a first person shooter player because like I could I suck with the right stick. I, I didn't grow up playing with it, and so manipulating the right stick, I've never quite gotten the touch right. So I wanted to design. I was like that was the main design challenge for the game. Is like how do I make it that even in 3D, all you have to worry about is jumping and shooting, um, and that's where like the lock mechanic that you see is is is, is presenting itself comes into play. Yeah. Where it's like she will automatically lock on and orient herself and fire at the target that um so that all you have to worry about is jumping and shooting. 
Um, and, and that's been like a really important thing to like toward translating the 3D Mega Man, or like Mega Man X in 2D to 3D. Um, so that on top of like responsive, like fluid movement, you know what I'm saying? If you notice when she jumps and stuff, she doesn't carry like momentum with her, like in a Mario game where it's like, it's hard to stop. If you jump and then let go of like the direction input, she'll just fall straight down. Because that was always right. really important with Mega Man is that like, it's one-to-one -one movement. It's like, you go where you want to go. Um, and when you do that, gameplay can become a lot more deliberate, a lot more, it feels more like um, rewarding. Cause it's like, she's doing exactly what I want to do. And if I messed up, that's mm. cause it wasn't because I was fighting physics. It's because I just didn't plan my 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 my, my approach correctly, right? And so, like taking from inspiration from games like Hollow Knight, Mega Man X, um, that really like really nailed that awesome feeling. Um, that that's like that's kind of what's going on under the hood and what's really important for the game. I I can't champion that enough. Uh, when you said that awesome feeling, the game feels excellent when you pick up the controller and you, um, yeah, you have to. You, you saw me falling, and that was on my that was of my own. My own fault, you know. Nobody else. Yeah. I, I can't blame the game for those those mistakes. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, the the um, you know the environments are challenging. The opponents are challenging, um, and the gameplay is super fun. Um, you know it, what you have going on here is already incredible. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. A little tip: if you can make it just past this next section of like platforming challenges, oh, good shot. So he, if you can make it just past it, there's a checkpoint, so you won't get reset to the beginning. Um, so there's an enemy here. There's going to be a turret who's going to fire at you from long range, and it's shielded, so watch out for that. And then you have, like, Wait, a little... Look at him. I know, because I want you to get this checkpoint. I don't want you to have to reset. Gonna, we, he right, wants you to succeed. Up. I'm going to switch that. want success for you. Ready? Ooh. Remember, he shoots three times. One, two, three. And then you oh. can... Oh, you got this. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I love that. I love, I love the variety of the enemies, too. Like, you, you, you get adapted to... you Or, you, sorry, you adapt to the the play of say uh one enemy and then another one shows up um nice. oh. Oh, my God. We got uh, this. yes nice nice so now <laughs> if, here, now here. you can die whenever whatever you'll, you'll at least get a little checkpoint um and so yeah so that was the thing i really loved about Mega Man games is that like the the enemy design is not that complex. Like the enemies do like one or one or two things. It's very different from like modern shooter games where it's like you've got enemies who like take cover and move them left to right and they have all this like advanced AI. I found that like if you just combine simple elements to with each other, it can make for a very complex situation. So like here, it's just a yeah. moving platform that also happens to have some obstructions in the way, but also happens to have an enemy floating above you, which is gonna cause problems, right? Or like here, it's like it's just two enemies. But they're but them being off stage a little bit and like opposite each other presents another type of challenge. And so it's really cool being able to like layer on complexity by just like literally adding these very simple elements and combining them. That's one of like the main differentiators from Protodoy Delta from like the nearest analogy people have noticed is like, oh, it looks like kind of like Ratchet and Clank. Um, but the difference there is that like with Ratchet and Clank games, typically you're expected to do combat in like combat arenas and platforming and platforming sections. They're like they're like divorced from each other. And that's not Mega Man, right? Mega Man is always like, you gotta jump and shoot at the same time. You gotta deal with like, like mm -hmm. platforms coming at you and enemies coming at you simultaneously. And so that's been a really important design aspect for the game has been like to be able to, whenever you see some platforming, add an enemy in there, you know what I'm saying? So that like the player is like doing both simultaneously and that gives the game its unique DNA. Yeah, I can't, I was just about to say, I can't wait to see an enemy in this space. I'm already stressed. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's a chaser. He's a chaser, that little one. Yeah, those little guys, man, they they come for you like got yeah, no they patience don't, as soon as they they're show kind of up. relentless. Oh, there he is. And if you there's You're the doing camera, such a, a good job though. You're doing pretty good, man. Yeah. Oh, this is my first time playing. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. I'm, I'm my health bar, I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you got this, you got this. So that's the thing too is that like I also have to kind of like toe the line between like cla like traditional Mega Man difficulty and like modern game design sensibilities because I felt like that's one of the reasons why Mega Man has not been as like it's like an icon it's like a household name but like I think the fact that the games have been so difficult that like not many people have beaten a Mega Man game um, kind of detracts from his overall appeal and so I'm trying to find how do I kind of like bridge these two things where it's like you have just enough difficulty where it feels like it honors that sort of like a appeal of it. Like, oh, these games are tough, but it's not so hard that like no one, no one can beat it. Only a, only a handful of people are experienced like winning. Um, Cause I feel like, yeah. you know, games like Pokemon, that's part of the part of the appeal, I think universally is that like everybody beats Pokemon. Like no one doesn't right. beat Pokemon. 
And so since everyone has such fond memories of like, you know, I succeeded in that. It was it had some difficulty to it, but like I figured out the tight matchups and built my lineup. It creates like a like like fond memories, you know, and that in and that tri contributes to its overall like appeal, I think. Um, so yeah. I wanted to do that with Proto Joy Delta. That like it's a t it can be tough at times, but there is there are sensible game design decisions that allow for it to be a little bit easier, so that like it can so more people can enjoy what Mega Man truly is, you know, and um, and, and it, but in a three D space. Um, so like yeah, like so the checkpoints are in there. Um, there's gonna be like an item shop where you can purchase like little health like um, health refills, you know, what I'm saying to help you out if you're low on health, and a little item which will. Um, nullify damage when you fall into a pit so that like you know maybe you know if you're finding that too difficult you can just you can absorb you can like nullify that and then just tr keep trying over and over again similar to like in celeste it's like there's like no penalty to dying you just start over and you can keep keep trying until you get it um so like yeah just a lot in terms of like making the games ac accessible um and modernizing like right and, and, not, and not repeating some of the same kind of like um things that kind of held back uh, previous like similar titles Excellent. Yeah. I'm all into this gameplay. I, I can't say that enough. I love this little touch here. Right? <laughs> so, you know, earlier in the game, I, I spent this time navigating these um, these rotating objects, and this right. last one here rotates faster than the others, which, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, <laughs> proved itself to be an unexpected surprise. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's those, it's those little nuanced, nuanced adjustments that I think are really okay. cool. So, turn around. So I the feel like you have to, to the yeah, you have to go through yeah. there again. Yes. Yeah, so you will have okay, to dash jump again. to clear it. Yep, yep, all right. But it's only there for a little bit, right? So you okay, gotta pull yes. this, you gotta okay. do the dash. Woo! Oh! Yeah. There we go! Right. Now this makes there me... Go. <laughs> Good job, Derek! I probably wouldn't have made it that far. Mad, mad proud of you. I can't <laughs> wait to play this game! I'm serious, yeah. I cannot wait to play it. It yeah, definitely so brings back, like, nostalgic feelings. Of when I used to play video games with my brother and stuff. <laughs> yes. That is the yeah, that's that's the goal right there. Um, yeah, the, the target release date is uh, Q1 2023. Um, and with the when with the humble publishing deal, like that's, it's been such a huge boom because now I, I haven't mentioned this before, but like I don't work full time in games. Like I work full time as like a like a engineer, like for for like mechanical engineer for a company. Um, and this is all like like a side project, sort of like just a hobby, like a creative passion of mine. Um, but with the humble support, I'm now able to like hire like set teams like level designers and environment artists and programmers to sort of round this game out. So it's like everything you see here, I designed and programmed like myself um, and, and built. The, the art I was able to with the BGDF funds, hire artists, install like this art and, and put together this level. And my friend Armando Navarrete, who, who did the, the initial like level design for these couple stages. Um, but now with this like publishing support, like we can now finish the game out and add like like all the rest of the levels, um, finish up with the bosses and the sub bosses. The game's in a pretty good state though. Right now, it is playable start to finish, including the bosses. Um, what's missing is like animations and um, some tweaks to the AI beha the behavior of the AI. This is a crazy section, by the way. Like uh, it's a wild. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> When the, when the lasers started intersecting, I was like, I'm just called, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah. You got a dash jump. Ah. Yeah, I forgot about the dash. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm really, so yeah, Q1 2023. Um, and uh, yeah, now I've got the support that I need to sort of round this project out. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't be more thrilled. It's like a, been a tough road, um, but seeing the positive reaction from folks like yourself, Destiny and Derek and and just like like the, the community in general has been like really like motivating, you know, people people like what they see, you know, they like what they see, and I, and I like that they like that. <laughs> I mean, like for this to be like a side project and a hobby, like it's very well polished. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so when you were like, yeah, I don't do this full time, I just you know, you know, I just do this when I have some free time. I'm like. <laughs> It looks incredible. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't. So here's the thing. There's a lot of stuff in the game that I don't know if Derek will be able to showcase. Um, because uh, see, I want you to get to the end of this level because there's a cool cutscene and where you meet like another character. I'll say, um, but I'm not sure how much longer we have on the stream because like um, it'd be cool to kind of see that. But if we can't, it'd be nice to kind of showcase some of like what else is in the game. But um, so yeah, you guys, let me know if if you think we've got the wherewithal. Oh. You're gonna have to like those guys. You gotta yeah. stun them and then get around them. So like the trick you know, is, the way I knew that, and I was, <laughs> and I, I said to myself, we're gonna hit them, we're gonna, we're gonna, and then we're gonna move on and still, still bump into them. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so you got to shoot him when he's low, and then you can dash up over him. Bam! There we go. Oh, now, there you go. I add, I add the complexity. Now you got to deal with two of these bad boys. There's one going horizontal while you're on a jump pad. So you gotta, okay, gotta, we gotta, you gotta time when you shoot him so you can make sure he's paused away from your primary path. Yep. And then you yep. sort of sneak right by. It's a, it's a wild, it's like simple elements. You just add them together to each other and all of a sudden you got a, you got quite, you got a spicy pepperoni, they say. <laughs> but a spicy meat <laughs> <laughs> There we go. I think oh, I there. He's got a lot of help too. So oh, you're gonna wanna um, make sure the camera gets yeah, focused on that guy. There we go. Oh, gotcha. The power. I don't know if anyone's on a keyboard by you, but like a little pro tip, if you hit, oh man, what's the button? I don't want you to die. There's a button to regain your health, um, and I want to help you, what but you I don't, all, there's also a button to self, yeah, there's cheat codes, man. There's also a button to like self-destruct, and I keep forgetting which is which. <laughs> no, oh. Oh. <laughs> he said, I, I installed the game shark, but I don't know what it's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you have to hold... The left alt button on the, on the keyboard for for one second, and your health will magically regenerate. It's okay. I'm gonna Ooh, I'm gonna press go. on with the challenge. He's, go he's gonna oh, press I'm on the challenge. Oh, I'm he's gonna, I'm gonna he's press, gonna press on. on. Okay. If, if if I die, I die. <laughs> see, there we go. That's the way. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way you gotta be, man. If I die, I die. See, he's good. I would have been like, ooh, I can regen my health. All 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 all. A little tip with this one is if you dash jump onto the, the trampoline, you'll keep the you'll keep the momentum from it. So you'll continue to like move faster in the air. Um oh, wow, that's cool. so to make that to make that second jump a little more easy. Um there's like little nods here or there about like for players who who do become comfortable and gain mastery with some of the movement. Um that like like technically this whole section you can almost jump you almost dash jump to totally through if you all right, guys. Oh. I I'm so sorry. <laughs> we just got told right. we're great. over time. But thank you so much for uh, showing us the game. It's incredible. I can't wait to play it. And I think we're going to throw up a trailer for the new game. Adam, it was great talking to you. It was really nice meeting you both, Destiny and Derek. Um, and I'm glad you like. I'm glad that you like my game. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for having me, folks. Take care. See you around. Our next guest we have up is Scott Popular. Uh, you just saw the trailer for Ninja Man. Uh, and I, I, I think we, we we need to go right into talking to Scott and hear about uh, what's at play with Ninja Man. And so, uh, Scott, are you with us? I'm, I'm, I'm here. I hear you. Can you hear me? Are we good? I can hear you. I yeah, can hear we you. can hear you. you. How are you doing gang, today? Gang, gang. I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's excellent. We're good. And, you know, we're talking about games. Everything's excellent. Yeah, yeah, man. Congrats to Adam. Congrats to Adam. You know, black <laughs> excellence at all times. Shout out uh -huh. to Adam. But you, you, yeah. we, we, we want to give you your spotlight. We want to give you your spotlight, too. Shout oh. out to Adam, but also shout out to you, Scott. Not only not only do you have a game to share with us, uh, but, but please tell us about your, your background. Uh, tell us where you are calling in from. Uh, you know, please don't, don't miss any details. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do that. All right. So Scott <laughs> Popular is currently calling you guys from sunny California. The weather is perfect. It's, I mean, sorry, sunny Hawaii. I'm, we left there a long time ago. And, oh, um, nice. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's like I got a, I got an extra tan on top of my regular tan, and I'm feeling pretty good. That's what's up. You know, very melanated. Nice and chocolatey. And yeah, super chocolatey at this point. Super dark, special yeah. dark chocolate. <laughs> And, um, but yes, I'm talking about Ninja Man, the game. Make sure you get the apparel at some point, uh, probably in some retail store near you. And it's a lovely game about infinite love. Like, just imagine if you had a ninja best friend who could just throw love infinitely at the opposition or people. Because I feel like 
there's been a lot of sadness in the world lately. Um, even on TV, just being in America for this short amount of time and seeing like just travesty upon travesty upon travesty. And I just feel like the world needs a little bit more love and ninjas disperse love the best. So in Ninja Man, all you have to do is hit them with some love, take them to the club or take them back to their respective places later on in the game. Um, the music is very important to me. This is the first time I've ever made music for anything. And um, I love it. We tried to make something club banger-ish for all the people mm. in Atlanta and all the people in Tokyo. So uh, the game is basically in the setting of Atlanta, Tokyo. So I spent about 60% of my life in Atlanta and 40% of my life in Tokyo. So there's going to be a lot of different mixes. All right. And I'm, I'm watching you play this game. So you can use the left, you can use the D-pad to climb the trees. Okay. It'll make things a lot easier for you. And also if you uh, hold cool. down, yeah, if you hold down the square button, if you're on a PlayStation controller, you will run. Excellent. And you can also throw, you can throw love while you're in the tree. We got the Game Pro magazine, the tips and tricks. That's okay. going to be a new saying. <laughs> Throw some love on you in the tree. The music is incredible. No. When you're, Thank uh, you. no, Thank I'm you. sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to say when the trailer came on, I was like, what? So, big up that's, on that. That's the feeling. Yeah, that's the feeling that we want to, we want people to have. Because, like, honestly, when, I, when we started making this club, after the joke part of it, it was more like, yo, I want to make a video game that people can play in the club. And it just it just yeah. feels like it's more. <laughs> like you know you, you like you ran out of money. It's like oh I can't buy no more drinks. Let me go play some Ninja Man real quick. And okay. it's it's been an awesome ex okay. yeah it's been an awesome experience to see people like play the game and enjoy it. But even more so is when the people behind them, like they're like coaching them. They're like they're not they're not pro gamers at any point at all. They're like yo you need to go do this. Ooh, watch watch out watch out. Oh no Derek don't do this to me. Don't do oh you didn't die you just lame. Oh I'm oh I'm lame. <laughs> you lame. <laughs> It's good. So okay, so I, I'm going to be I'm going to be here not only asking questions but playing at the same time. Um, so you'll right. have to you'll have to bear with me if I if I uh, if I'm distracted. You know, I'm throwing love at everybody. Um, okay. Tell us, tell us about the, the story of of Ninja Man uh, because the the aesthetic, the style, everything is so. I, I got to know more. I got to know more. I got to know why are we why are we, we there? There's zombie exotic dancers, but we're bringing them to the to Glitter City. What's what's the world of Ninja Man? Glitter City, first and foremost, Glitter City, no relationship, no relation to Magic City at the moment. But um, <laughs> <laughs> with that with that being said, um, it's just about you know shooting love and making people a little bit more happier than they were before. Um, I wanted this game to be extremely comedic and just taking a lot of experience from me growing up in Atlanta. And I spent a lot of times in like nightclubs, like doing various things, not only just like having fun and partying. I also did a lot of security work and I also had various video game events in various clubs in Atlanta and Tokyo. Mm. So I'm also one of the founding members of Final Round, which is one of the first esports tournaments in the Southeast. And so, you know, just growing up in growing up in the arcade era actually taught me a lot about like video games in general and just dealing with people. And yeah, there you yeah, definitely get the run on. And you know, yeah. I just I really 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 enjoy ninjas and like the things that, you know, they're able to do. And it's not like like some super fantasy thing in a sense. It's like, okay, this is like basic, you know, like contemporary things that you could deal with. I mean, it's basically collecting fruit, giving it to, giving it to the people, or later on, they're going to be animals and dragons and all kinds of crazy things, and all just right. doing it to a really good, feel good beat. I cannot agree more. Oh, and the, the beat feels good. The vibes are good. Um, everything, <laughs> yeah. everything is real fun. And there's a Love there's the a lot of like um, Easter eggs for people who who've lived in Atlanta, and people who lived in Tokyo as well. Like, I like doing a lot of collaborations with people who have like either clothing brands or or venues, 
who were like, hey, man, can you put this in into your game? I'm like, yeah, if you're cool, we can we can work this out. No problem at all. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's dope. I wanted to say, like, and when I first looked up the game, you're doing a good job. Don't, I would, I don't know how many <laughs> chicks I would have gotten in the club already. Probably none, you know. But um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, um, where did you start developing the game? Was it in Atlanta? Was it in the U.S.? Or did you actually start this process when you were in Japan? So, actually, we started this process when, uh, right before COVID hit in Japan. And it was actually okay. a joke because the character itself, <laughs> just the, the headpiece and the chain was the logo for a podcast we had called Ninjas in Tokyo. And Ninjas in Tokyo <laughs> was actually... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but Ninjas in Tokyo is actually a, a two-man rap group consisting of me and uh, Rekadam, who is... He's also the drummer in Steamed Universe. And he's worked on several indie games as well. And so That's we put up. we put that group together, and then you know we decided to. Oh man, that's where you need to use the gold chain R one. Let's, let's up, Derek. Maybe. Let's practice. Yeah, he put, yeah he did. He definitely. We gonna practice, let's Derek. Practice using, let's practice. No, just just the, the gold chain, okay? The R one. All right. There you go. Yep. When yep. You, when the white ninja gets close to you, hit him with the R one. There you go. <laughs> All right, so going back to, to Roger, who is a fantastic drummer and a very good programmer and sound sound engineer as well. Uh, he helped me put all this together. And then with a little bit more assistance from uh, Chu High Labs, which is in Kyoto, they helped us get get the game to this point right here. So shouts out to Mark, Zach, and, and Kenzie. I've gotten a lot of support from the Japanese dev community. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. Like, how, how is it working in the industry there as an as I guess as a black entrepreneur game developer um, I lived in South Korea for a little bit and I know it's it's much harder to get into, into things there so how is it in Japan uh, food's great and um, <laughs> yeah food's, food's great but at the same time it's like you're in a different market so you have to right. especially with a game like this because like people were like okay so it's a ninja game and he doesn't this, the ninja's not killing anybody and there's no swords so this is not your normal ninja game at all but right. at the same time i feel like it's been really well received uh when we did the art shows those were actually my, my favorite because like i got like i was had the chance for to see like japanese people especially japanese women who have no well i wouldn't say they have no idea but they they don't they're not really familiar with the whole club culture and they just look at the game and they're like oh this is so cute like the ninja is giving them fruits and he's taking them back to these places and that's it now on the surface level and they just enjoy it i mean it Word. it looks fun but like when yeah. i saw it i immediately laughed because i was like this is hilarious <laughs> like yeah. and then when i read the description i was like okay i see what we're doing here i love that you've combined two cultures and it it's seamless like even though you're like oh it was kind of a joke this it works really well and i think it speaks to your creativity like what you've done here even though you thought it was a joke at first like look what you've created so far this is incredible thank you thank you all right Derek, agree, there's, there's nothing that was just that's the easter egg there's nothing up here but thank you for getting there I saw, I saw it on the side. I had to, I had to explore it. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, to check you. it out. Actually, actually, yeah. in the in the black disc where you are right now, that's uh, that's Roger. So I've I've made it a point to put in everybody who's helped me work on this game. They're in the game somewhere, like as uh -huh. an Easter egg. Excellent. So they know Excellent. exactly like like where they are in the game, and it's like cool. it's been this game has been like really important to me because like couple of my friends died during this making this game and they're in the game now so it's kind of like oh i'm so you know, sorry no i mean you know it, it happens to everyone but i'm just glad that these people were a part of my life and they actually helped me make this game and so a at the very least commemorate yeah. them in that way yeah 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 so, Absolutely. so they're, they're definitely going to stay in <laughs> no, they're not being taken out absolutely yeah. and oh there are black women in this game, just to let you know. 
<laughs> I was I wasn't I gonna was, ask. I mean, I was wondering, but I was like, I wasn't gonna ask though. <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask. I wasn't trying to put anybody on the spot. <laughs> I was, yeah, you know, I wasn't trying to like throw you under the bus or anything. I was just like, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> uh, 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 that's, that's that's definitely like that was the first thing my sister said when she played this game. She was just like, "There's no like you have to put more black women in the game." And I was like, "Okay, no problem. I got that." Yes, sir. <laughs> The, the cherries are very. Kudos to her. That's 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 it. That's the up, sis. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you have you have to say it. Like like, don't hold your tongue. If it's something that needs to be said, you do. just go ahead and say it. You do, especially because you are, you know, a black creator. So this is like our yeah. moment in time to see ourselves um, in spaces that we aren't normally asked to be in, which is why black voices right. in gaming is so incredibly important, right? So. Mm -hmm. I love that your sister said that. I wasn't gonna say anything until like after I was gonna hit you up on Discord and be like, "Yeah, yeah, like, yeah." Play nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, it played hey, nice, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the hair flip and the and the sucking of the teeth. Okay, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, bad. if people wanted to. If people wanted to find more about you and your game, can you plug your socials? Uh, definitely. Everything at, at Scott Popular. So that's Twitter, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to follow Ninja Man directly, because Ninja Man is doing all kinds of things all over the world right now, you can follow that at, at Ninja Man Game on Instagram. And that has like all the pictures of removable graffiti. So one of the black women that's in the game is Quita and Quita went to the beach yesterday. So you can see all her new pictures on Instagram right now. So just go there and oh, check okay. her out. Love a little bit of the, the AR, uh, AR gaming aspect, bringing some things into reality, fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to get into the AR thing. Cause like, I was like, wow, this would have been a lot easier than me just walking all the way over here and posting this up here. I could have did everything digitally. Absolutely. All right. Well, Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us and showing yeah. us your game. It's absolutely incredible. You've done some great things. We're running a little behind, so we are going to jump off here. But uh, let's stay in touch, everybody, especially because okay. I want right. some swag. Yes. <laughs> All right. right. I got you. I got you. All, <laughs> <popular>. <laughs> All right. Guys, we just want to throw a shout out to our sponsors again who have helped us create this great showcase bringing together so many cool people raw fury playstation intel game developer boost id at xbox and razor again thank you so much because without you um we wouldn't be able to put together what we put together and it's been such an incredible journey already but we're gonna throw on our next trailer so you guys can check this game out and then we're going to introduce our next guest Hey guys! Keep on rocking in the free world. 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 Yeah, go on ahead, go on, do what you want. Live free, do what you want. Ride around town, ride a bike, son. Stay carefree, live life, son. Man, I know all the time they putting you down. I know it take a lot just to put up a smile, but for now, do things you ain't did in a while. Blue dress, ooh, girl, I'm feeling your style. We got to, we got to get it. We on that, we about to shut down the city. We make the, we find the force in our system. We love the, we down the back of the vision. We don't got time to love yeah oh that was Love dope it. yes like oh the music was the great with it. Yeah, yes was all right we want to bring beloved to the screen to talk more about his game what is up beloved hey what's up y'all <laughs> how you guys doing good how are you doing good. i'm so pretty good. good i'm pretty good listening to the it's beat. a pretty good day out here so Excellent, excellent. Where are you uh, at? I'm based in Portland, Oregon. Uh, kind of, it's a nice day, but you know, the weather's always kind of rainy out here, so we're big chilling. <laughs> okay. I didn't mean right. to cut you off, Derek. Go ahead. Oh no, we're good. I was I'm only going to provide the the useful disclaimer that I'm going to try my best to ask questions and play games at the same time. So you know, don't judge me if I don't do well. I always judge. You've so. been you've been <laughs> killing it. 
Uh, Ninja, <laughs> You've been killing Ninja it. Man You're good. Lame. You're I got called, I got called lame three times in Ninja Man, so you know we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive in. But please, I'm I'm so pleased to be <laughs> I'm so pleased to to uh, to dive into Five Force Fighters. So um, we would love to hear more about about what we're uh, going to be showing here. Yeah, tell us okay, about first. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before you jump into the game. I want to know a little bit about you, and then we're gonna jump into more about the game. So. How'd you get started? Uh, What's the inspiration behind it? Okay, yeah, for sure. So I kind of got started when I was around 19 years old. Uh, a lot of stuff was happening at that time. I just like, it was kind of a dark time. I'm the best. Going to college full time, working full time. My parents weren't really around, but they were all the way in Nigeria. So we were financially, you know, supporting ourselves. So I was paying for rent for my siblings. My sister was doing the same thing. <laughs> we were just really down. I spent a lot of my time just thinking about like what I really enjoyed. Uh, and gaming was the main, like creating the game was really what we were all about. And my little brother, he was, uh, I think around 14 at the time, we started talking and he was drawn in a, a, his uh, sketchbook and I just saw and I got super inspired and I was, I, I, I asked him right then and there, like, you want to make a game with me? And he was like, yeah, always trusted me and we were, we ran with it. Um, we came up with a lot of concepts, characters, a lot of things changed. Uh, but we tried to keep that simple as possible because at the time we weren't really a uh, specialized part of the game. That led to this five foot project. That's incredible. I love that you you and your brother work together. So that's one of the first things I think Justin actually told us about you, um, is that you and your brother kind of like work together to make this game. I barely get along with mine, so I think it's incredible that you guys were able to pull together <laughs> and, and make this game. It's so, so, so nice. Um, and this is your first game, correct? Yeah, it, yeah, it's our first game. What's wild is I, I actually have like time to I get along with all of them. Uh, you know, we got some fights here and there, but yeah, we, when it came down to the nitty gritty of like, doing the town and bad, we're, we're really good at connecting, like, supporting each other and boosting what we like to do. So I had a lot of support from my siblings. My sister was the reason we were able to start animating. She gave us a tablet. She was going to the tablet. She was going to tablet. Pretty much after this, her, her main computer of sorts to like, work on tablets. But yeah, me and my little brother, Black, he's done, he's done an amazing job. Play testing and with me. Uh, had a lot of, had a lot of fun working with me. And trying to come up with unique ways to make the fight. That's really what's up. Like, I love that it's a family affair. Like, that's incredible. And that you have so much support. Because like you said, your parents are not here correct they're they're in nigeria yeah yeah so how do they feel about your game have you showed them what do what do what do they <laughs> think <laughs> um, <laughs> well, uh, crazy thing was is that they weren't really on it at first you know uh, i think they thought it was kind of like bad uh i kind of made them you know, studying or something. <laughs> so we kind of were split up. So we liked in Arizona with my sisters. I'm still in Florida. But after a while, when it started, I thought that we were pretty successful with our parents. We were excited about what we were getting into. It looks so good. And I, I'm. I'm sure this goes without saying, like everybody watching is like, obviously this is where they get their inspiration from. But for those of you who don't, like myself, know for sure where you got your inspiration from for the game, like, can you tell me what inspired you? I, I get like some Street Fighter in here, some some Dark Stalkers, you know, but like, Good have reference. you always been into fighting games and like combos and stuff like that? Okay, so if I'm gonna get serious about it, uh... Please get serious. I'm ready. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Okay, so 
<laughs> so what happened was uh, we were trying to make <laughs> when we first make the game. We were actually trying to make a platform fighter. Uh, it didn't really work out with the ideas that we were trying to combine. So we just started putting things together. There was no there was no direct inspiration from Boondocks. There was no direct inspiration from uh, the, uh, Street Fighter. It all just kind of matched when you just subconsciously start thinking about what you're doing. What you're trying to okay. Similar, uh, situation. I mean, I've played a ton of fun. That's what I said. It's like it all comes together at some point. You have your own idea, but those things are already uh, But the direct inspiration, I guess, would be this fighting game. It's actually not even an official fighting game. It's Hyper Dragon Ball Super by Team Team. We played it a lot. Yeah. That's, that's where we got a lot of the interest. Even to, I guess that indirectly was uh, actually Well, it looks good. It looks really good. It I, is really challenging. Did too. you just? <laughs> did you beat him up? With, oh. You won, right? You won. That was you, I'm, right? I'm, I'm I'm Pebbles. I'm on the left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, most Pebbles. deaf. Most deaf. All right. <laughs> I want to make sure. Uh, the so game. You can't win the next thing. You can't lose the next one. You got it. I don't know. I'm getting bodied right now. <laughs> yeah, the fight is actually tough. I can't lie. So a lot of the things about this game that we really tried doing that was different. There's a small bar at the bottom of the force meter. Uh, and burn the meter to do all types of all types of attacks. So that was the main difference from most fighting. Usually conserve I want to thank you for showing us your game. It's absolutely incredible. You and your brother have done an amazing job. If people want to find out more about you, more about the game, can you plug your socials? And, and why can't I talk today? Can you plug your socials <laughs> so we know where to find you? Yeah, um, we're at Kaizen Creed on Twitter, Instagram. It's Tumblr, I guess. I, I made one a while ago. YouTube, so you can find <laughs> us there. Oh, and in TikTok. So, okay. yeah, you can find us there on those social media accounts. All right. Well, thank you so much, beloved. Also, I I love, I love your handle. Like, I love that it's beloved. That's so sweet. But thank you so much I mean, for coming on. <laughs> and... <laughs> thank you so I much for coming name, on. Yeah. I don't know what he was gonna say. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump to our next guest. Beloved, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of that with us. We appreciate you letting us play your game, and we will talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you. All right, and our next guest is... Uh, we have our next guest coming on in just a few minutes, uh, or, or just a few moments, but uh, it, you, um, while they're getting ready... Um, Des, what do you think of this show so far? What do you think of these games so far? Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm just really hyped to be a part of this because I I know you've been on our podcast before, Burnout Brighter, and honestly, I'm just all about diversity. So having this space, having people come on and, and creating a safe space where they can be heard and seen and you can see like the talent and the, and the creative knowledge that's coming into it is just incredible. But I won't go on. Let's bring on our next guest. Who is it again? We have Khalif Adams from none other than none other than Spawn on Me podcast. Khalif, hello. Khalif, what's up? How's everybody doing? I think I think I can hear you all. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Actually, I can't. I can't hear you just yet. I'll just do a little that? dance until you get back. <laughs> Can you hear us now? He can't hear us now. <laughs> I need some music. Maybe we, <laughs> we, we will float in the ether we, until we will just until float. I know when he came onto our show, I promised him that I would have drinks. And, and um, I do have drinks. I have drinks. Right. This, this is just for Khalif, that old Smoky like, Mountain. Oh. Like you're you're just talking about something you're not going to share with anybody else. Is is that what? I mean, like you know, that, like I'm not going to partake in it right now. You know, I'm just I'm just saying, like you know, when we all meet up, I'll bring I'll bring the drinks. You know? 
Ah, okay. Got it. I mean, that's that's fair. That's fair. Um, <laughs> uh, do you drink, well, Derek? Do I? Uh, you know, I, I imbibe from, from time to time. Uh, I, I, okay. I try to keep it minimal, though. Um, you know, I, uh, yeah. when I, when I lose, uh, you know, when I lose control, I, I'd say control of my, my, uh, my spatial awareness, that's, I, I don't like being in that <laughs> state, so I don't stay in it very often. No, I understand. Uh, I understand. Yeah, I tried to articulate that the best way that I could. And it, it just, that's about how I, <laughs> no, that was when good. I have too many drinks. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. I'm sure everybody else understood what you're saying. So it's fine. <laughs> but, um, I know we were talking a little bit about um, Black Voices in Gaming and, and why it's so important. Just while Khalif gets uh, settled in, guys, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to listen to us a little longer. But um, I think one of the most important things is that, like we said, creating a safe space. And it's, it's like a family. So I know when I jumped in the Discord and I was like talking to the people and like in, introducing myself so they didn't think I was slipping into their DMs, like some random... <laughs> crazy chick um everybody's so friendly and that's really really nice because there's this idea that like black folks are not friendly do you know what i mean and i think like being in uh, a group of people who are like amazingly talented but also um you see the interaction between uh justin and our first guest you see how they're just excited um how there's a game that's about spreading love. Do you know what I mean? Being a ninja and spreading love. And I love that we're able to showcase that here and we're in a a gold chain. Listen, the gold chain was the most important part. I don't know how I forgot that, but uh, (laughs) I think that's incredible. And um, I'm so happy that we get to be a part of it. You know? Absolutely. You know, if there's anything I could extract from that, what I heard was, uh, you know, knocking down stigmatisms and then building camaraderie connections between other people, and I think that that really uh, that really hits the nail. Uh, the community within Black Voices in Gaming has been one that not only serves me, but I, I'm, I'm a part of it as well. You know, and, and being here with you today and, and everybody who's tuning in is uh, one of my favorite things about it. Uh, increasing the visibility of uh, Black-led games is really important. This extends to um, uh, other diverse communities, the BIPOC community, LGBTQIA. But today, we are championing Black voices. And so, uh, absolutely, I, c- I can't say it enough uh, to, to check out the games that you've seen so far. We do have another one a little bit later. But uh, be sure to follow up on, on the titles that you've seen to wishlist them and support the developers. And if you out there are a, a burgeoning developer or seeking a, a path to get involved in games, absolutely connect with this community because there's a lot of people within here waiting to support you that's what's up that was that was really good that was that was 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 nice (laughs) (laughs) but um i'm not sure if people know this but you were also one of the uh interviewees on the show at one point in time talking about something that you worked on right that's right uh we are going to see a tiny piece of that a little later um, but yes, I had the pleasure of, of being a part of uh, Black Voices in Gaming. Uh, I think it was last year, and I got a cool T-shirt that my that my stepson now wears to school to you know be like, oh look at my <laughs> look at these games. <laughs> uh, it's excellent, um, you know. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I at that time I shared um, some things from from Onsen Master, uh, and and like I said, we'll see a little bit more uh, today. All right, awesome. All right, I can hear you now. Welcome back. What's good, everybody? Right. How's everybody doing? Sorry for the hey, hey. the the issues on on things, but you know that's the way the, it, it happens. Fine. You know, that's the way we know it happens. I don't know. I've been doing this so earlier, long. I, I brought the drinks, <laughs> Khalif. I brought the drinks. Did you bring your drink? I have. I have. Uh, <laughs> I have cherry water in here. That better be. Some, Cherry water, son. Cherry water. Come on. You know now. you get those syrups that you get when you go to the store and you get the when you make snow cones. I got some of those. Yeah. And I put some fizzy water in here. And this helps me not. Oh, drink okay. Soda. So I'm trying. I'm trying to be That's fancy. I had my pinky up when I did it. It was beautiful. Oh. Okay. There, okay. Okay. Was there a memo <laughs> sent out about these drinks? I'm going to keep this real brief because we have questions to ask you, Khalif. <laughs> but did did y'all have like a drink memo? I, I have coffee. That's all I have. I didn't know. Tracy came through with the drinks, and I was like, I, I got to find a glass. I have a glass right here somewhere. I know I got something. Right. 
uh, I didn't want to be left out. Um, but <laughs> thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for so much for pushing through the technical issues. Uh, Absolutely, we no appreciate problem. you being here. Khalif, is if, if if we could jump right into it, if you could share with our audience who you are and and what it is that you're doing with Spawn on Me podcast. Yeah, uh, my name is Khalif Adams. I run the Spawn on Me podcast. I like to call us the premier podcast spotlighting people of color in the video game industry. We've been doing this for almost a decade now. Uh, we just had our ninth year anniversary back in January of this year. Uh, and yeah, I think I think you come to our show to talk about all the things that you don't hear on other podcasts around blackness, around culture, around, you know, about what our con uh, contributions are to the space. Uh, and hopefully we do that in a, in a smart and, and fun way that, that makes you want to kind of dig into it and be a part of our Bacago uh, uh, residency here uh, at Spawn on Me. Now, now for the maybe the new listeners, can you break down what Bacago is? Because I, I don't know if you know, I've been listening to Spawn on Me for a long time. I know what that is. Maybe some people at home don't know what that is. Yeah, maybe some people yeah. don't know. Not me I mean, though. if y'all don't know, what's up with that? Y'all need to get up on, on uh, no, I'm just playing. But uh, when we first started the show, <laughs> uh it was it was basically where we uh started it from so i was in brooklyn uh my 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 co-founder sister holmes was in chicago uh so we decided to mash those two up and, and make our faux land in which spawn me resides which is Chicago. so folks are like Bro broccoli i don't know what y'all why are you promoting broccoli like this <laughs> uh, i was like no it's chicago and brooklyn mixed together it's, it's, it's Chicago, and people are like oh yeah, I mean, now yeah, i get yeah. it you should be able to extract it, you know, once you hear it, but we're covering the bases just in case. Uh, how did Spawn on Me podcast get started? Yeah, so I was at home. Uh, I was at work, actually, uh, in my IT job, and I was hating my life because I was like, I'm tired of y'all not understanding how mice and keyboards work while I'm trying to teach y'all how the printer works. And you're, kill you're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. Uh, so it was one of those moments where I sat there and I was like, I, I want to feel smart. I want to feel like I'm uh, you know, adding something to this, to this uh, pastime that I love. Uh, so we started writing, uh, you know, way back in the day on, on a blog called the Spawn Point blog. Um, and then uh, decided to sunset that a couple years afterwards and start a podcast. I was a big fan of folks like Giant Bomb and the One Up Show and all those things back in the day and said, you know, there's no space that has us in it. I don't see any black folks doing this work in, in that way and, and kind of showcasing and talking about what we bring to, to, to the gaming space, even though I know we're all playing. I know we are folks who are doing this work and, and, and being in those spaces. So got on, got on uh, uh, a game of 2K, uh, was playing and, and ran into this cat while I was streaming it. And he's like, hey, I saw that you're right. And I, you know, we've been thinking about wanting to do some video game content. Let's, let's get together and, and do something and, and see what we can do. Um, and, and that's how Spawn and Me kind of came together. It was me and C uh, coming together, thinking about what the angles would be for that conversation and how we could bridge it out. And yeah, like nine years later, it's still going strong and, and making things happen. That's, uh, that's an amazing story. Congratulations on nine love years. Love yeah. Together. Thank excellent. you very much. Um, you, okay, so I mean, now we're, we're nine years later. How do you, how do you feel about it all? In, in, in contributing to a space that is that is bringing content to to black voices and you being a part of that space as well it's really humbling I, I think you know it's one of those things where you know you start a side project and then your side project becomes a thing that is a passion project and then that passion project then gives you kind of a feeling of like oh wow like this is a thing that i can do do well and and i'll be honest it's given me a lot of purpose it's given me a lot of ability to uh, kind of think, you know, future future facing in, in a ways that I wasn't really doing when I was when I was young. Um, and also it, it gives a, a space to be able to talk to, you know, our culture in a way that I think we don't really get a chance to see in this gaming space. Like, I think I think culturally for for the media space, we usually trend in kind of index really high on pop culture stuff. We are first movers on everything that's hot. We are the we are the culture. I say that all the time and I mean it. Um, but it is one of those things of in the gaming space, you don't really hear about our contributions and what we do. Um, so me trying to be a conduit to, to bring some of those folks to the forefront while also, you know, talking about games through my prism as, as a black man in, in, in the world. Um, I think all of those things, uh, you know, add to this really cool space that we've created. And I hope then that people are digging it for one and people are seeing the conversations that we have as smart ones and really interesting ones. And again, I think it's just a thing of reconnecting that idea of 
nothing on this planet moves that's dope without us, right? Gaming is the biggest space in the world right now in terms of entertainment. We influence this space in ways that no one will give us credit for. So how do we talk about that? And how do we push that to the forefront and make that the understanding that we are, we are making strides here and we are doing what we need to do to make it dope? Well said. Uh, Khalif, I, I really, really appreciate well you touching base on that. Um, you, I, I wish we could we could sit and talk about the podcast and sit with you for for much longer than our segment provides. You know, today, and so you, of course we have to we have to find an opportunity to bring you back and, and find an opportunity to talk about Spawnomy podcast more. I don't know, maybe like a burnout writer Spawnomy like you know yeah. thing. I'm, I'm, He's I'm, been I'm on sure. before, and he knows <laughs> he knows the invitation is always open. Anytime you want to come on, let's just just come. We got to get yes. you both on spawn on me too. I I, I know that the technical I, issues kind of kind of shorten it up, but uh, again, yeah. the, the 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 things that are that are happening today, I need everyone in the chat and everyone who's watching understand that this takes a lot of effort. This takes a lot of work to get together. This is a thing that is for the culture, and it really does help to to spread the word about our contributions to the space. So please support it. Please give it love, and please give these two wonderful folks all the love because they've been holding it down and hosting this thing and making it dope so i've been sitting in the chat watching so thank you again for having me it's been br been brilliant and uh, i'm sitting in the chat walk, rock, watching and rocking all wow. the job wow those humble words thanks what? for your support <laughs> yes appreciate it um, well, before you go you so much, before Khalif. you go yeah where where can people find you Khalif? where can people find you Spawn on me drops every monday new episodes uh you can find it on every podcast platform on the planet uh, check out Spawn on Me uh, with Kali Adams. I'm also hosting a show on NBCLX uh, called The People's Pregame. Uh, so you can check that out on Peacock TV and NBC. So you can go see that on your television screens. Uh, that's the last episode is going to be dropping on uh, this Saturday. So you check that out. Uh, it'll be uh, on 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So go check that out and check out the, the rest of the show. Wow. Doing amazing Awesome. Things. You guys go support Khalif. Absolutely. Wow, All right, wow. we that, are going that little to. Drop at the end. Oh, that little... okay. So that was incredible having Khalif on. He's been on our show before, and he's just doing. He's doing. He's doing. He's doing the damn thing. He's doing amazing things out there, creating spaces, talking about things that people aren't talking about, especially like our influence in the the game industry, where you wouldn't even think about it. And the, the one thing that came to my mind was like uh, Grand Theft Auto so much of our music yeah. so much of our vibe is in that game and people don't really i don't think people really give us our props for it you know what i mean so i love right. that his show is focused on doing things like that absolutely absolutely i i, I can't i can't say enough that if you, if you haven't tapped in with spawn on me podcast already definitely give it a listen you heard it from khalif that there's it's nine years running so there's so many episodes a backlog of episodes for you to to check out and 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 become familiar with and and then that that drop with the 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 peacock tv uh feature like what it, over here doing really amazing things. that was dope yeah mm -hmm. i'm yeah. really proud of him i'm proud of all of us i'm not gonna lie all right, right. let's go to the trailer <laughs>
I hope you guys saw that incredible trailer. That was beautiful. Just the gameplay was great. But let's go ahead and bring on our next guest, Jordan Scott, so he can tell us more about his game. Yes, yes. And I'll be on the ones and twos with the controller. Hello, Jordan. What's up? Oh, I can't hear you. Hold on. Oh, there you go. I see that Attack on Titan poster in the background. (laughs) Wow, but you don't see the Hunter x Hunter poster. I see how it is. (laughs) <laughs> only his only his like hand i wasn't sure what that was no that's fair how are you guys doing the, doing well you the immediate Good. aggression that came you know, at this at the start of i the know <laughs> i clutched just my pearls did y'all see that anime the respect it deserves okay <laughs> yes yes no Listen, it's nothing but i love yeah i love i love anime have you ever heard of escaflone <laughs> Uh, no, so I'm the fake, actually. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but Jordan, it's so great to have you on. I'm so excited. Thank you. you. Happy yo, your here. vibe is so nice. Everybody's vibe has been nice, by the way. I know you guys are watching. I liked everybody's vibe. But <laughs> your vibe is so nice. I just okay, have to throw so that out the there. I want you guys coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me beat up, Jordan. Don't get me beat up. But can you tell us a little bit? about yourself sure sure so um i'm jordan uh i'm working on an action game called arbiter um i've been making i'm 27 i've been making games uh since i was like 17 i would say uh mostly just fan games uh and then so i guess i guess i made like i made a dragon ball fan game i made a pokemon fan game (laughs) and then i made a fan game based off of uh an animated show called ruby and I actually got hired for that one. So I worked on that for a bit, oh. and then we finished, and then I left, and now I'm here. <laughs> I think I know Ruby. It was 3D animated, right? It was the girl with the yeah, red hair? Yeah, yeah, Yep. See, I know stuff. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> the game looks absolutely incredible, and I can see like some of the influence from from working on Ruby, like the mm-hmm. the character design and things like that, um, and it, it's mm-hmm. it's beautiful. So one of my questions was, how how did it feel going from making video games to to being hired on to do Ruby and now to be making this game? Uh, okay, so I, I will answer that. I will say something, <laughs> uh, Derek. It'll probably help if you press uh, I think it's R three to lock on. Um, I forgot to put that in the little oh. button prompt hey. thing. But there no, you go. I was, yeah. I was, okay. I was vibing. We're all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. um, so how did I go from like uh, just working on my own stuff to working in uh, like a like a professional environment? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so it was it was fun. I mean, it was it was obviously jarring because you obviously you go from having like full creative control to like okay now you're with a team and you have people to answer to and you have deadlines and you have to do same right. things a certain way. Um, but it it was it was good. It was, you know it was effectively because um, I got I got hired like shortly after high school, so it it was effectively my like school because I was working with a lot of like professional people who knew a hell of a lot more than I did. <laughs> so they, they, I kind of took that as an opportunity to, to learn as much as, you know, um, work. So, yeah. <laughs> it looks so good. Like I can tell that they taught you, Thank you a lot. Not that you're not talented on your own cause you absolutely are, <laughs> but this, this looks really good. I keep giving myself disclaimers. I don't know. You made me nervous after I didn't know what that anime poster was. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> this looks- incredible like just the the flow of the environment so i i know i mentioned that i could see some like influences from ruby and we all know Mm -hmm. we all know now that you are a huge fan of anime are there any other influences (laughs) for this game (laughs) um (laughs) i would okay so as far as like games are concerned i would say the, the the two big ones are kingdom hearts and devil may cry um, because Kingdom Hearts is like my my kind of like bread and butter. It's basically like my my Bible for action games. It's what I grew up on, and it's what it was like my first exposure to them. Um, so just like the kind of like very accessible and, and 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 kind of like intuitive combat of Kingdom Hearts was something that I always really enjoyed. Um, oh shit! Did it break? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. We'll reload if I. Okay. <laughs> 
as, you, as you can tell, I've given Derek a very early build. <laughs> um, no, yeah, we're lucky Kingdom to Hearts... play. We're excited to play. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kingdom Hearts and uh, Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry just because it's it's crazy and, and you, there's just so much you can do with its combat system. Um, that was that was something uh, I very much wanted because Kingdom Hearts is fun, but it's also you know it it, it has Disney characters. It, you know, they're not going like a, as crazy hard as I would necessarily want them to. Uh, right. Yeah. right. Otherwise, um, uh, then there would be the anime inspirations, and those would be like Naruto, Hunter Hunter, uh, Dragon Ball, um, and I'd say that stuff like affected everything from like. Uh, um, character design to to like the the style of storytelling, I guess, because I'm very much like mm -hmm. a, a like I like I like uh, uh, storytelling in my games. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, lot lots of inspiration from lots of different places. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned the storytelling because I love like good narrative design. So I am mm -hmm. going to be interested in playing your game and like learning more about the characters and and the story. Mm -hmm. Without giving away too much, can you tell us a little bit about the story? <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Um, so this <laughs> okay. actually this this <laughs> this works pretty well for for the build because um, basically the story of Arbiter is that spirits have just spirits are basically like these demonic enemies that have just arisen from the world and put in humanity and kind of like kind of like Attack on Titan. They put them in this kind of like corner of space. Um, but two of them. Uh, have decided to uh, help the humans and you know, effectively give them their powers so that they have a chance to fight back. So those two are actually the two that are following Derek around as he's playing. Um, mm. And the, the uh, goal, I guess, of the game is that uh, your predecessor um, was basically defeated. And, and the predecessor was, you know, um, a person called the Arbiter, who is the person who hunts down these spirits. Um, and they were defeated, and so all the spirits they had they had sealed inside of themselves and defeated have been released back into the world. And now her hey. uh, successor, who's this character, um, is now hunting them down. And so what you're seeing actually is um, essentially every time you you defeat one of the bosses in the game, you get the ability to like kind of like half transform into that boss. Uh, so if you see like Derek Ooh. switching characters. He's basically mm -hmm. uh, switching from the main character, who's named Ash. That that that's Ash, yeah. And um, uh, he's 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 like using their souls to kind of basically change the entirety of the combat. So like you can see, he's very focused on uh, sword play uh, in his in his like default state. Um, but then if he right. switches to uh, one of the other transformations. Um, He'll get like claws he can attack with. Uh, the other one, as you saw recently, is like, Ooh, look projectile that shadow focused. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and yeah, so um, the, the the main the main pull of the game is basically like yeah they they are uh, traveling around the world to uh, hunt down these 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 spirits uh, and and kind of steal their powers. <laughs> yeah, that sounds dope. Like I'm excited for this. Um, <laughs> so I know we don't have like any environment. <laughs> I don't oh, yeah. know what's wrong with me. <laughs> we have anyway, nothing. I know. <laughs> Every time you start we laughing, nothing. it makes me laugh, okay? I'm no. I, I laugh when I'm nervous, <laughs> so that's just like how I process. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Okay. But um, so one of the things I noticed is like um, there's not any environment right now, right? I know there's going to be mm -hmm. environment later. Does yeah. this take place in like. Um, the past, the future, or is it like, can you tell us a little bit about the world itself? Yeah, yeah. So I would say it's it's basically Western Naruto. <laughs> it's like, there's not really any okay. technology whatsoever. Um, uh, characters are very community focused and, and very, um, well, yeah, just, just, just not very technologically dependent. Um, so kind of like Middle Ages sort of deal. Um, but it has like, okay. as you can see with kind of the character's design, it has like Eastern influences as well. So um, right. lots of like, lots of like flowy coats and sashes and hair, uh, but they're still going to be fighting with like broadswords and, and armor and stuff like that as well. So, yeah. <sighs> Gotta love a good broadsword. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. So you know, one, one I'm going to throw it to, to Derek. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, one, Derek. One benefit to, uh, 
<laughs> you're all good. You're all good. One benefit to, to the environment right now, or the, the prototype that we're seeing at this moment is allowing to, mm -hmm. to focus in on, on all the gameplay, all the gameplay. Um, yeah. I have my controller yeah. here and everything feels, feels tight and frenetic and, 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 you know, <laughs> the, the action is, is so cool to jump into. Mm -hmm. Um, what kind of work went okay. into some of the visual effects, some of the timing, anything that you could share there? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of work goes into it, I guess. Uh, like my, uh, I guess background is in animation. So like animation is like kind of the thing, I would say the, the thing that I, that I like focusing on. Um, yeah. so, so for me, it's just like, um, I, the money I received from the, uh, Black uh, Developer Fund was directly to create the different transformations that you're playing as right now. And what that entails is essentially like two months of just animating this character until he has about like 200 animations or so per um, transformation. And so from an animation perspective, that's kind of like what the workload looks like. Um, and then for, for effects and stuff, uh, as oh yeah, I, I totally forgot to mention, but the game has like a pretty central mechanic in its uh, light and dark form. So you actually have the ability to transform between your, your light and dark powers. Um, and in, in Derek's case, as he switches between them, he'll gain access to different uh, abilities, right? So um, for, the, uh, for the effects, I'm actually able to kind of reuse a lot of stuff uh, like pretty consistently between the enemies and the character because they're all kind of pu pulling from the same power source, as, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so, from that perspective, it's not that bad. I would say the biggest thing, <laughs> the big, the biggest amount of work would be animation, and then obviously environments because I haven't gotten to them yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you'll get there. No worries. You'll get yeah, for there. sure. And after people for see sure. you on this, you probably like. Are you working on this by yourself, or do you have like a small team? Uh, I'm I'm pretty much working on it by myself. I will be hiring like an an audio engineer, and I do work with uh, concept artists for for the characters and enemies. But otherwise, uh, yeah, pretty much all me. Yo, that's incredible. That's I, I, just I know that came out stuff. really slow. <laughs> you just discovered what? Sorry, uh, I just discovered that you oh, can like you. rapid fire switch between between dark and light modes, which adds just a new layer oh, yeah. of gameplay. <laughs> um, gameplay tactician. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I'm, I'm a huge proponent of basically having all your tools available to you at all times. Um, so for me, like being able to just switch characters, um, obviously you can't do it right now, but eventually I want to be able to like switch, switch like transformations like mid combo very easily. Um, yeah. But uh, being able to just switch characters, switch uh, between light and dark, switch between abilities, switch between ground and air, all of that, just just to give a very strong sense of, of control when you're playing. Uh, that's, that stuff's very important to me. Man, the animation and the effects are so beautiful. Like, I'm captivated, <laughs> even without an environment. You know what I mean? No, this, I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really, really good. It makes me very that. excited Thank for you. what's to come. Yeah. <laughs> no. You could have like Thank blobs you. in the background and be like, oh my God, it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. We, we only, we, we do just have a little bit of time left, but I, I wanted to mm -hmm. give you an opportunity to, to share with those who are also looking forward to this game. Where can they stay tapped mm -hmm. in with it? Where can they find out more? Uh, so there's arbitergame.ca, which will give you a link to everything. Um, my Twitter handle is at Jordy underscore J underscore S. Um, and pretty much, yeah, Twitter and Twitter and Discord are like my places. So I will be giving tons of updates in there pretty regularly. So if you're interested, come check it out. I'm going to yeah, come. Absolutely. Are you, are you going? <laughs> we're all going. We're all going. We're, yes. we're going to be there. <laughs> Thanks. Oh man! Well, that, that was, was incredible. That was dope to see. Yeah, like he's basically just doing that by himself. But um, guys, uh, we have some more trailers to show you, um, and I know you're going to be really excited to see some of them. I know I'm excited to see some of these trailers because I always love seeing the stuff that is coming from Black creators in the game industry. 
how do you feel about it, Derek? I, I know there's there's a there's a special uh, trailer on there of um, a certain game that I'm, uh, yeah. I'm excited to see. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I mentioned a little, a little bit earlier that there, uh, my studio might have something. Well, we do. Um, there's there's no there's. No <laughs> Uh, we, we do have a trailer in there, so there will be some latest footage from uh, Own Semester, which you can look forward to. But uh, to get to, to answering your question, trailers, I love trailers. Uh, it, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, my favorite part of any sort of uh, game event is getting an opportunity of seeing what's coming or, or new updates from that studio to just continue building that momentum for for uh, anything else to look forward to. So yeah, this is gonna be, I mean, I, I don't have any favorites here. All these segments have been great. This is gonna be one of my favorite segments. <laughs> <laughs> they have all been great. All the guests have been absolutely incredible. And I love that they took the time to come on and talk to us about their games. Like you guys are rocking it. And, and you're one of the reasons why Black Voices in Gaming is as great as it is, I know we think our sponsors, we think the people who help put us together, but also you coming on and, and showing your talent has been such an incredible inspiration uh, for people who want to get into the game space, for, for kids who might find us on YouTube, like seeing other people that look like you doing amazing things in the space that you want to be doing things in is so powerful, so very, very important. So big ups to you. Congratulations on all the work that you've done so far, it's all been beautiful. And that goes for past guests and future guests. Like, I'm excited to see what else we're going to be showing. And I'm excited to meet more incredible people. Like, it brings a tear to my eye. I don't want to be, like, all emotional and stuff. So I'm not going to be. Gonna, but it does make me really say, happy. Are you going to cry? Are you going to cry on stream? <laughs> no, no, no. You know... <laughs> I go cry. I'm fine. I'm tough. What? It, it, it would. It would. It would be. It would. It would. It would. Uh, it, it would be dissimilar to me crying on on burnout brighter podcast. Burnout brighter podcast. So yeah, if you go back and you look at the episode, I thought you that said I was featured in uh, burnout did, brighter head. <laughs> oh no! I, <laughs> I know. I like, that's that's a, not what that's you said. Completely, that's a completely different podcast. <laughs> Anyways, the point I'm being, sorry, guys. That was a blooper. The point being, <laughs> there will be some there will be some great clips from the from the blooper reel. No, I, I was saying, yeah, if you want, if you do go back and you check out that episode, yeah, I, I do uh, break down uh, after having answered an emotional, an emotionally uh, evocative question. Um, so there you go. I didn't ask that question, so I don't know what he's talking about. But um, uh <laughs> but. Honestly, with everything that's been going on, and, and we're going to touch base on it a little bit, like, um, let's just be real honest, um, the the shooting in Buffalo, the, the continued um, racial profiling and, and, and issues that we're having, not just in America, but around the world, have made this a very tough time for, for everyone. So having Black Voices in Gaming come on is it's just such a bright spot. And there are people who don't understand it. Like, I, I've seen some comments like, oh, like, this just continues the divide. But it really doesn't. It's just showcasing us, and it's us supporting us. And I think that's important. Um, we have to support each other. And that is what Black Voices in Gaming is about. Would you agree, Derek? Uh, 100%. <laughs> there isn't anything that you said that I that, that, that it is to be argued, at least from this seat here. Um, it, it's we are we are better when we're capable of, of building together and capable of showing the things that we're interested in building so uh, being allowed to join black voices in gaming and, and be able to talk with all of these uh developers and content creators uh shows that there is value for these games and podcasts and and any other content in between uh to be um that, that there's a community ready to receive it and there is i mean and I just want to point out, it's not just been like, oh, okay, guys, ready for the trailers. Ready. Let's get it rolling.
you were a waste of time. I turned a man to a beast right in front of me. The only warmth that I see steams from a sleeve so bloodly. He's naked, see a black man out in the pavement. Every crack in the ground is a burden. He's taking the place in bets, spending their jets. Thin haired bastards craving sweat, salivating on a human marionette. Nervous fingers grip the cage they build and shake it. I want this man to help me break it. If not for me, for himself But I doubt that the torture is aware of his health I want wealth Cause the goal of this age Is to be the parent and evil out there rattling the cage I want help If not for us, for our kin And the little dead is in before they ever begin I want wealth Cause the goal of this age Is to be the parent and evil out there rattling the cage If not for him, for myself A whole river of heads this is why I want wealth. So I can see our masters dead. I'll make it to Shambhala Hope I'm invited My frequency's like a Gotham I made a pact with myself I'll Select make it to Shambhala Right I think that love is a song that goes like Luna Even in the darkness of night The moon is always shining Or oh. Heartbeats of the kick drums Elimination Veins bleeding the melodies Like playing bees What you think is a mix Focus on how it fits Envision making it rich Just be saying please the whole so the melodies like playing keys. What you think is the mix? Focus on how it fits. Make it more than a wish. Don't just be saying please. Victory. Incredible. Oh, stop. Oh, what? Wow. You, 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 like, you got any words for those trailers? Listen, like, they were all so good. Especially the one with the bathhouse. Like, I really like that one a lot. <laughs> but all of them were really, really incredible. Like, I love that we had a chance to show all of them. And I hope you guys are interested in uh, playing some of those games. And if you are, make sure you wishlist them. Absolutely. Yeah, that was Onsen Master, Grid Force, El Paso Elsewhere, BPM Boy, and Samurai Zero. For you all to check out um we are getting to the end of our show and so as we come to the end of black voices in gaming we want to acknowledge those whose lives have been lost in the acts of violence towards the black community our hearts go out to the families and friends who's of those who of those affected by the devastating buffalo new york shooting tragedies like these continue to darken and threaten our peace but we will continue to push forward fight and create places for ourselves in this world we have a right to be here be seen and heard 
Black Voices in Gaming continues to create safe spaces and opportunities for those who wish to be in the industry. It's been the theme of the show. We've been talking about this throughout. That's right. Thank you so much, Derek. You're absolutely right. We've had some great guests today, but we couldn't end it without taking a moment to highlight why having this show during June was such a fantastic feat. June has always been summertime kickoff vibes for me, yet it's also a time of celebration in the African-American community. Juneteenth is a federal holiday celebrating the emancipation of enslaved people years after the Civil War on June 19th, 1886. Being here on today's showcase, highlighting some of the industry's most talented voices in gaming is an incredible accomplishment. We're all very proud to be a part of it. That being said, we would also like to thank our partners before we end. A shout out to those who helped make this event. Raw Fury, PlayStation, ID at Xbox, Intel Game Dev Boost, Razer. We'd also like to say thank you to our team, Wilmer Sound, the Mix team, and Media One, our broadcasting partners, Twitch Gaming, IGN, Steam, and GameSpot. Also, we'd like to thank you for joining us and for all of the devs for coming on and showing their special wares. We've also got merch available if you guys are interested. It's available at our roboroba.gg slash the mix. So go out there, support us. And Get the merch. Get the merch. Get the merch. And <laughs> wish list the games. Yes, wish list. <laughs> Can't say that enough. Wish list helps game devs. And speaking of, the mix has an event page on Steam to learn more about Black Voices and gaming titles. Buy the available games or add them to your wish list. Again, they help the devs a ton. If you'd like to keep up with the Black Voices and Gaming family, you can follow Black Voices and Gaming at BVI Gaming on Twitter and check out the games at blackvoicesingaming.org. You can also follow The Mix on Instagram, on Twitch at Media Indie Exchange, and on Twitter at, at Indie Exchange. Um, I, that, that's like the end of our show. It's all we have. That is, that, is, um, that is pretty much the end of our show. But do you want to plug yeah. your socials again so people can follow you? Before I do that, I have to, I have to thank, thank you, Des, for the time that I've got to share with you today. Thank all the developers yeah. and, and content creators yeah. who have joined us. Uh, to thank the mix, to thank Justin and everybody who has helped pull this show together. Got to get out that get get that out of the way first before I start talking. Got to get myself. that out there. That's true. That's true. Yeah. My bad. Uh, I'm selfish. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's it's okay to be a little selfish. Um, you know, if if you want to keep up with me, if you want to keep up with Onsen Master, uh, you can find me at Derek V Fields on social media. You can follow up with the games at Waking Oni Games, uh, and that's across the board. So uh, yeah, keep tabs on me there. All right. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing hosting duties with you, Derek. I cannot wait to work with you more in the future. If you'd like to know more about me, you can find me over at the Burnout Writer Podcast or on Twitter at DMVC32. Stay tuned for a quick message from Justin about our upcoming events and news, and we will see you all in the next showcase. Deuces. Bye. Thank you so much, Derek and Destiny. You guys are so amazing. We also want to thank you for coming through and checking out Black Voice and Gaming. You can check out the folks who are a part of the BVIG community at blackvoiceandgaming.org and on social media at BVI Gaming. We will have more events and showcases soon, as well as announcements for our BVIG nonprofit program and accelerator. Please support the devs by following them on their socials, wishlisting, pre ordering, and buying their games for show. Stay tuned later this week because we will be hitting you with the Gorilla Collective 3 on Saturday, June 11th at 8 a.m. PST, 11 a.m. EST. And we're dropping another bomb with the Gorilla Collective 3.5 on Monday, June 13th at 1 p.m. PST and 4 p.m. EST. Yes. Thanks for joining us. We will see you soon. Again, this is Justin Woodward. We're out.